So when we talk about, like, if we want to just be real, like, right now, <laughs> in the go. moment. That's what we do here <laughs> on the old couch. Right. Is that, for me, is learning how to, because sometimes one of the trauma responses when you, you know, divorce right. or you've been really hurt, wounded, childhood, whatever, is you become super independent. Hello and welcome to The Middle. I'm so excited that my dear friend is here on the old couch today. Tiffany Peterson, Hi, welcome. Thanks for I'm having so me. I'm so happy this happened finally. Our schedules are a little bizarre, go crazy, mm -hmm. but this is the perfect way to start the new year. So mm, happy so 2021. True. I know. Can you believe it? We did it, girl. We got here. <laughs> we made it. I am so grateful that you're in my life. And now the audience of the middle gets to fill of your joy and your light and your mm. spirit. And we were talking before we push play that we could have a lot of middle conversations mm -hmm. about a lot, of, a lot of things. Right. So much richness between us. Yes. Yeah. We both have had some life experience and you are a life coach, business owner, consultant, my friend, yeah, a friend to many. I think anyone that calls you friend feels mm -hmm. like they're your favorite, which mm -hmm. I think is a compliment well, thanks, to the babe. kind of friend you are. Mm. But I really wanted you to um, visit the yellow couch because I feel like this new year needs to feel different. I think yeah. everyone's clamoring for some healing and some hope. And that as we have said goodbye to 2020 and all the struggle that came, I I couldn't think of a better person to kind of give us some mm. yummy tools to say, I, I, I'm ready to pivot. I'm ready to mm -hmm. feel different and see myself and the world differently. And so thank you for mm. making time. Of course. <laughs> like we're here in your lo lovely loft apartment. I know. I mean, I, it feels so chic in here. It's so fun. I love this space. So for you. I love the conversations that have happened here on the old couch. And like I teased our audience, you have had your own series of mm -hmm. middles. Yeah, lots of them. So what are some of the things that have, you have a big toolbox that you mm -hmm. pull from. And so what kind of has added to your, what's in your back pocket that helps you show up with this really open heart mm. and hopeful mindset? It's not because it's been Disneyland every right. day. <laughs> <laughs> but Which, I would love a Dole Whip right now I from know. Disneyland if we could go I there. I Disneyland to I open. Know. But I would say for me foundationally is the awareness that you can choose your belief system. And that might sound interesting to people, but choosing your beliefs that, for instance, I choose to believe. I can't, you know, scientifically prove it, but I make a choice to believe that life is working in my favor, that God has my back, that, you know, the scripture that says all things are working together for your good, right? I choose to believe that. Now, I can't always prove it and I don't always feel it, but I choose to believe. So even though my feelings don't always align with that kind of level of confidence, I choose to believe it. And so for me, I would say foundationally, is trust and surrender, mm. is I choose to trust, right? Now, I don't always feel trusting, or I sometimes feel like, God, what are you up to? Or life, what's going right. on? But I choose to come back to trust, and I'm learning more about surrender. I'm just allowing myself to be in the flow of like where life wants to take me and what the newness can come. Like you said, you know, regarding the, the age of our audience, it's varied, which I love mm -hmm. that this show attracts a good wide range, right? We have an audience of, of young, starting out, dreaming, planning, and we have an audience of those that have gone through some things and they're further down the trail, so to speak. Mm -hmm. you, you went through a divorce and I mm -hmm. love that you brought up trust. And I think yeah. anyone that's gone through a divorce, trust is the first to go sometimes trusting mm -hmm. yourself, trusting other people because it's, mm -hmm. you know, marriage is vulnerable and you invest. Totally. Where did you foster that trust after a heartbreak? Can you share a little bit about totally. being in the middle of that for, mm. for those that are watching that are yes. maybe finding themselves, wait, this is not the new year I plan. I think we're getting a divorce. Right. 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 And whatever it might be. And it's just the reality that I put my trust for me foundationally in my God or higher power, right? And so because all humans, even my, like we, we get it wrong sometimes, mm -hmm. right? Like we trip, we fall and so forth. And so it's learning to trust. And there's so many rich lessons that came from that marriage and that came from also the divorce experience 
right? It's just that, man, it's life 101. It's like I took a really steep, deep class in some life teachings, Yes. right? And so I think, again, it comes back to, and it's a work in progress. And I do think with all the coaching that I do is that I ask people to adopt a mindset to have a progress-oriented mindset. That right? they're, wherever they're mm-hmm. at today is not forever. Is right. that what you're saying? Yes, I'm saying that. And I'm saying that it isn't about perfect because that's not real, but it's about progress, not the perfection. It's about progress and practices. And so some days I'm really confident in what I'm talking about yeah. and that I'm living it. And in some days my own emotional state or things have happened circumstantially yes. where it wants to rock those thoughts and so forth. And that I still, but we come back to practice. So when we talk about a toolbox is that you're going to have the ebbs and flows, but the toolbox, what's in your toolbox, what helps nourish you, what grounds you, your self-care, your spiritual practices, your relationships and support environments is drawing upon those toolbox, that toolbox to say, okay, I need this. I need that. Because it is a work in progress. For me, the challenge that I'm now at times experiencing is how to allow myself to open up to love. Yes. Right? And that's that just, that's just real. Again. Yeah. So when we talk about, like, if we want to just be real, like, right now, <laughs> in the go. moment. That's what we do here <laughs> on the old couch. Right. Is that, for me, is learning how to, because sometimes one of the trauma responses when you, you know, divorce right. or you've been really hurt, wounded, childhood, whatever, is you become super independent, Mm -hmm. right? Like, oh, I'll just do it myself. I'm going to protect myself. And you're not always seeing that consciously. And I have a lot of great friends and relationships in my life. And a lot of love. fostered, yeah. Definitely fostered, cultivated, intentional. So there's a lot of relationship in my life. But for me, allowing myself to be open to love again, right? Love romantically and so forth. And I've been in that, that experience this year. And leaning into, right, like, I wasn't planning on talking about this, by the way, today, <laughs> but here we are. I'm so glad. The real. I'm so glad. It's just the willingness to allow and be open and practice. And there's times my fear comes right up or that angst, angst and anxiety because the vulnerability again. And that's why I'm saying trust and surrender. And what's really helped me is to release the outcome mm-hmm. and be in the process. Right. And so whether your outcome is, gosh, I want this in my business. I want this in my marriage. I want this in my health. life or my health or what whatnot. Is all the New Year's things. All the New Year's outcomes and or goals, dreams, you name it. But it's coming home to the process. How can I be committed? So for me, for instance, I have certain things that I'm focused on that I really, it's fine to have big vision, right? Create the vision board, have clear outcomes. But where you're going to find your power at is in the process that says, what are my daily, weekly habits or my essence, my beingness? Who am I going to be today? How am I going to show up today? And so while I can't control the outcome of, a, say, a relationship, you can another person, how, you show how am I going to show up? I'm going to choose love. I love I'm going that. to choose to be open. And even if I get hurt, okay, then you get hurt. But I would rather not, you know, hurt myself to say, well, that's, I got to just, no, nope, can't do it. I'm going to run and get out of that, is like, oh, wait, I'm going to lean into that. Same thing with my health is like, rather than always being so focused on a number on the scale or a specific thing that way, outcome, nothing wrong with having outcomes. I focus on, I move my body every day. I drink greens every day. I hydrate. I prioritize sleep like you wouldn't believe. It's just that you can get really clear on what are the habits that you can control. Same thing with business. Like Mm -hmm. we're in the same world of speaking Mm -hmm. and training and coaching and so forth. Which 2020 turned that upside down. Oh my gosh. 2020 said, let's wipe that slate clean. You know, we, before we jump too far into some of those things, I really want to pause and make sure our viewers hear what you said on trust that Mm post-divorce choosing to connect with friends and family and all that's great, but to really jump into the deep end in, in an intimate relationship where you're like sharing your soul with Mm -hmm. one other person that the way you fo- focus on fostering trust is not getting hyper focused on the outcome, but just how you're choosing to focus totally and show up today yeah. intentionally. And I love that concept because I can get really result yeah. hooked. We all can. Yeah. And I've come to you many times in the tears. Yeah. And the, we've well, had some good stuff. Yeah. <laughs> like, I can't measure oh. where's the success. And I don't know what it's supposed to look mm-hmm. like. And really, if I return back to what you said, I love what you said that, you know, God really fosters that for me. And we mm-hmm. share that. 
that someone bigger than me Mm -hmm. is bigger than a divorce or a diagnosis Mm -hmm. with cancer, which is another experience you had. Mm -hmm. So I love that we started this conversation with trust and surrender. Do you feel like surrender was really the gift of cancer? Oh, the gift of that experience for me was learning again to, truthfully, the lesson of that was to forgive myself. Oh, There's a lot of spiritual teachers yes. that talk about cancer is a form of internalized resentments. And anger. Anger, resentments, and so forth. And I was holding a lot of self-judgment. It was post-divorce, right? Mm-hmm. And that experience, but it just was, I was in this experience of Really, I was moving on and I was happy and then I felt guilt for that. And it just was a lot of stuff. I had a lot of judgment that was up on myself. And judgment on ourselves or judgment on others is like glue. Still judgment. It's condemnation. Keeps you stuck, right? Wayne Dyer says you don't remedy anything by condemning it. You only keep yourself stuck. Yeah. You heal through love. Wait, pause and hear that. Yeah. Because I think especially with the new year, we're all like the list of goals. And this is how my body's going to look. This is how my mm-hmm. business is going to look. This is how my How the world should look. Yeah. This is how the relationships right. in the world should look. Right. And when they don't, which right. they never do. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> the sacred dance yes. is, is dreaming, but letting go of attachment. Right. Yeah. So the resentment Mm -hmm. and judgment keeps me stuck every time. Yeah. And so the more, again, we just ask or open up to grace for ourselves. I'm a big, as you know, teacher of self-care. It's a big part of my coaching is like self-care. And it's a really trendy buzzword right now. And that's great. But it's really about having a, a sweeter, richer relationship with you. That you become, what if, what if you could become the safest place you know? Mm. What if you could be your own best friend and you could choose to show up for yourself in that way? where you're kinder and gentler. But that's, again, when I said it's a work in progress, not perfect, because there's times I still have the self-doubt, the insecurities, or I'm hard on myself. It's just catching it, and I have a, I have a faster recovery loop to that when I fall down that rabbit hole, is to make progress with, I'm going to have a better relationship with me. And ironically, that's what's helped give me the confidence to explore, to open my heart to love and to relationships again, and because I'm in more of a centered place with myself. Mm-hmm. Mark Nepo is a great author I love. And he and I talked about this once where he says, you know, because when your fear comes up, because fear and love can be so intertwined, right. right? Like, and if you've been married for 20 years or you're just dating like myself and you're out exploring love and relationship, whatever you're at, like there's vulnerability involved. Right. It's and so you can have cost to do yes, business, girl. Cost to do in business <laughs> with the heart. Yeah. Is that you know, you're you have love and fear, vulnerability all mixed together. And so, but partly it's like when you're feeling that angst is come back home to your sense yes. of self. You have a really great question you ask me often, and it's not just a question you ask me. You ask it of your clients and of others. Do you know what question I'm talking about? Well, I have. There's a few. <laughs> Which one is the it? The one you always ask that helps me recenter is something that I'm intentionally working on. And it's the question of what do you want? How do you say it? What do you need, sweetheart? Yeah. Yeah. That and that's one. how she says yeah. it. And it makes me cry. No, and that's it's true. Right. Oh. But it's just like when you ask that and oh. any one of you, if you ask that to yourself is just choosing into your heart. But you have to say the sweetheart part. You do because it's like the tenderness. Yes. Right? It's going out of judgment of self. Yeah. It's really that self-compassion. Well, and it's just like that we've all been a four-year-old at one time, or maybe you have a four-year-old or a four-year-old grand kid or whatever the case might be, or you've had, in my case, nieces and nephews, where you have a four-year-old that's like, oh, I woke up from a scary dream or I've gone too long without a nap. And it's like, what do you need, sweetheart? And we help them with tenderness is to choose that tenderness for yourself. I believe you're your own best life coach. It's just that you learn to ask those questions of yourself to say, you know, oh, okay, what do I need? What do you need, sweetheart? And sometimes it's like, hey, I need Netflix and Ben and Jerry's. I'm crawling in bed. Sometimes I need to go for a run or I need to pray or meditate or get into scripture study or I want to get out and connect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's just choosing to be in tune with that and that you self-nurture. Tom Bilio, he has a great podcast show called Impact Theory, right? And he's built a billion dollar brand. I mean, the guy's got a lot of brilliance. And I remember hearing him speak at an event once where he said, you know, there's lots of great content and tools and tips and all the things of what people need. He goes, the one thing I would say you need that I've watched people at high levels of performance and creation and productivity. And if you want to continue to maintain that, he said this, the thing you need the most is your capacity to self-soothe. 
And I thought, isn't that interesting? Is where's my self skills? That was the weirdest skills? sound I've ever made on camera. <laughs> It Jake, was good. She was Jake is like, juicy. wait, I don't know how to edit that sound out. But Let's that is, leave it. Okay, we're leaving Just it. leave it. But listen, I think that's so, right? I mean, that like, goes to the heart. Can you self-soothe yourself? Because that goes to the heart of addiction and numbing. Yeah. Right? If we can find helpful ways to mm-hmm. self-soothe that don't violate our values. Totally. We're free. Right. So that's where the, what do you need, sweetheart, yeah. comes in. So like for me, when my anxiety spikes. Yes. And um, my angst comes up yes, because I'm feeling insecure or unsure or I'm feeling really vulnerable. Right. It's coming back to what do you need, sweetheart? And self-soothe. And it's like, I need a hot soak. I need my feet on the ground in the earth. I need to go to prayer or I need more quiet meditation or I need more connection. And it's just the awareness that you go internal. I think we all, whether it's you call it intuition, the Holy Spirit, your heart voice, it's just learning how to access it. There's times you are going to have great people that show up for you. Mm -hmm. And that's such a sweetness. But I want you to see that more as the frosting versus you're the cake. That you're so dependent on. That you come up, you show up for you to say, okay, ooh, what do I need? And that you can self-soothe because sometimes the world's going to love you and validate you and give you all this attention. And sometimes it's not. Well, or critics or things like that. 2020 showed right away that whatever we had on a platform Mm-hmm. Or on a pedestal, mm-hmm. or up up in the sky, thinking mm-hmm. it kept us all going, you know, in the right and same direction. That mm-hmm. that got changed, mm-hmm. and I think what a gift. We talked. I mean, I think about our conversations from the beginning of the pandemic all the way through, <laughs> and and all I, the flavors, all the flavors, and and those those trauma responses are so real. And I think a lot of that was brought up for us as a society last year. Mm -hmm. And as we go into the new year, I love the concept of you you sharing with our audience to foster trust and to really ask yourself what you need. But I can hear our viewers saying, well, what if you don't even know what you need? And you've Mm -hmm. mentioned a few. Right. I I ask my guests always what their manna is. Mm. And because manna is is non-storable mm-hmm. you know it's it's got a very short shelf life so you've got to do it every day and you've mentioned prayer mm-hmm. you've mentioned meditation mm-hmm. connection feet in there some really good ones so for all of those that are trying to make the list mm-hmm. and they're like i don't even know how to pivot this year and not be so hooked into results but mm-hmm. really nurture myself mm-hmm. What what's your top? If you had to choose one oh, like gosh. practice, yeah, that's that hard. Helps you. I know. If I have to pick one, it's definitely having a morning ritual that you start your day first and foremost in a way sacred time. Mm-hmm, sacred time. I call it the sacred ten. Is at least the first ten minutes of your day that you get nourished with you, right? And that can be a variety of things, but asking yourself what nourishes you, and then do that. For me, it's definitely this trifecta of prayer. I read Jesus Calling every day, which is a great Christian devotional book. And it's just opened up and there's scripture and so forth. And then I meditate and they, I do all three, right? It's like pray, read, and then it's like dropping into prayer, a voice of hearing and meditation. Sometimes I listen to a meditation to help do that. I love Sarah Blondin's work. love what she's up to. But for me, if I have to pick even then one out of those three, it's the meditation piece. Because that's that really is where, the sacred prayer and yeah. that is the voice of Jesus. Right? right. And that's where I feel he speaks to me and to my heart where it's like, oh, okay. Because sometimes prayer can be all like da, 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 going up. Meditation to me is like holding space to receive. What do you want me to hear today? What do I need to know today? And oftentimes I'll put my hand on my heart and uh-huh. on my solar plexus and just like breathe and Fill breathe it. it in. Yeah. And I just feel like, but starting your day with that kind of intention, it's just like bathing right? Or showering and getting, you know, like you're saying, again, it's manna's got short shelf life where, sure. but I want to start my day with some connection with the divine before I move into the world. And what a beautiful way to say, I'm learning to be my own best friend. Mm-hmm. I'm learning to know even what I want to mm-hmm. ask and need mm-hmm. yeah. and dream and all of the things. And what a, what a healing gift it is when we choose out of the busy and the chatter 
And I love that you started this conversation with, it's about practice. It's not about perfect. Mm -hmm, totally. Because we've talked to each other on the days that we're like, hey, we offer this to the world. Remind me again. Yeah. <laughs> I've called we're you. Practicing. Remind me again <laughs> what I know and I tell someone else because I'm not feeling it. So yeah. thank you for always being a safe space for me to say, I don't know. I think I'm missing a tool. And I, and I can feel our viewers are like, oh, mm -hmm. to go into 2021 with less attachment and more practice and more self-compassion, mm -hmm. what a healing gift yes. we could give the world. And what everyone just, did yeah. that for five minutes a day. But what you just said is where I think we find freedom. Yes. And what we're really wanting is you can't control the world. You can influence the world, but you can't control a lot. Right. Can't control other people, can't control the weather, yeah. can't control economies, can't control politics. You can influence them right. and be involved. But the reality is, is your world you influence directly. And it's saying, well, I can choose how I'm going to show up. What habits am I going to be adopting this year? Spiritually, mentally, physically, you know, emotionally. What are the things I'm going to be doing for my body, my brain, my heart, spirit? And that you become intentional about that is, hey, I'm going to fill the tank. I'm going to show up this way. How am I going to show up in relationship? Who do I choose to be? And that we come back to our place of real power, which comes from choice. Choice is also always our power place. I love that. It is. And it's like where freedom, like you just said, is there's a whole lot of unknown still and you don't know it, but that's been life always. Always. It's just that we can choose to say, hmm, how am I going to choose for myself to show up? And I appreciate that your life experience has cultivated this mm. being that I yeah. call friend. What a gift that you didn't skip over some of the lessons mm -hmm. because you coach from that place. Where can people find you if they want to mm. have more Tiffany? Yeah. My website. One, one, web <laughs> one episode of the middle was not enough and they well, need more. If my website is tiffanyspeaks.com, there's lots of free resources there, including a self-care guide. So I invite you. What a great yeah, to invitation that. and gift for 2021. Yeah. To go back to self-care. So you yeah. have something to even offer right. the world. No matter what there. the middle you're going through. Yeah. So blessings for you for oh, this gosh, new friend. year. Thank you Lots for having me in such rich conversation. And, and what trust you're doing. and intention and connection and yeah. all the things that we're trying to cult cultivate. Thank you for being a force of good mm. in the world. I'm so I grateful you, you're sister. here. I love you too. Mm. I hope you feel... A, a energy for this new year and a sense of hope that that healing is possible and connection is possible and surrender is possible and that it starts here it starts right there right not out there which we give our power away when we make it all about the news and yeah, the so politics true. and all the things so what do you need sweetheart what do you need sweetheart a little more of the middle and tiffany mm -hmm. that's what we need right <laughs> yes. Yes, yes happy new year to all of our amazing middle watchers and i hope you'll share this episode to kind of kick start this new year with a sense of hope and self-compassion